So aside my current active work in progress that I'm going to be showing you, what I want to talk about today is either transforming two of my sweaters that I do not wear and I'm going to be telling you why I do not wear them and how I plan to transform them and also how I am going to be going to a more extreme phase into reclaiming yarn from one of my favorite shorts. So hello, hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my very small place on the internet where I talk about my knitting adventures. My name is Isabelle, I am in France, and as I just said, there is something that is going on in my mind for quite a long time now. And I think today is the day or right now it's the time because I finished two of my main projects, my two sweaters. I'm wearing one right now and I'm going to be talking about it just after, after this introduction. And this has been in my mind. I want to wear all of my knits and there are for today three of them that I know I'm not wearing. I know why I'm not wearing them. I love them. I love the patterns. I love the yarn. So I'm going to be telling you what are my plans uh, for these three objects, for the two sweaters and a shawl. And maybe you can comment down below if if you are also doing this with your own knitting pieces or what do you do when there are pieces you knit, you love them, you love the yarn, but you don't wear them. Okay, so first things first, what am I wearing? I'm wearing my fleur shawl that I knit in Nutiden, uh, Nutiden that Caroline from Germany sent me and uh, I would like to give, to send good vibes to Caroline because we tried to arrange to go together to, to a yarn festival. Unfortunately, the train she had to take to get there was completely full and she could not get her trip done. So we'll do that one, one, one other day. So my fleur shawl in Nutiden. Fleur is a free pattern by Espace Tricot. And I mixed two colors parallel and the white one, the fukula or something. I, 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 can't, I can't pronounce that. And I made huge, big bubbles. So I'm kind of a, on a bubble train right now and you will see it just after that. And I'm gonna be standing to show you my dusking. That is finally, finally finished. It was blocked all the ends weaved in and I had to redo one of the sleeves because knitting very fine silk mohair, lace sleeve, silk mohair on big needles on a small circumference for the sleeves was very difficult, at least to me. And I'm thinking about getting shorties needles, a shorty needle set most probably a Shaegu one, because it, it was quite of a problem. Of, because of a ladder I would get when I was knitting with DPNs or even when I was knitting Magic Loop. So I did some kind of a, I have already talked about it on a previous episode, a technique that allowed me to see less ladders or not at all. So I read, did the first sleeve that had big ladders and they did not block out. So I'm gonna be standing. I'm wearing another one of these little brooches or pins that I've talked about last, last week in my previous episode, I think it was last week. And this one, last week was a brooch about the wind and, and the earth and stuff like that. This is the one I, offered to my sister-in-law and my two sons girlfriend for Christmas. This one is about the moon and I've had that one for several years already. So as you can see, 
what I was saying the other day was it's quite see-through in the bottom because you have four strands of silk mohair, lace silk mohair at the top, then three, then two, then one. So same thing on the sleeves. So the fact that the sleeves are see-through is not much of a problem because we are used to showing our arms. The sweater being very see-through at the bottom and the midsection, you have to think about that if you decide you want to knit it because you have to be comfortable with showing your midsection, which I am not. Uh, anyway, so I maybe I need to find another garment I to to do underwear as an under an underneath piece because this one is a white one. I need to find there are somewhere in my drawers a tan one or something that is close to my skin color so you don't see it. And this is the skirt I was talking about, very fitted skirt, very comfortable to wear and a bit darker than what I recalled. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure these two go together. At least it's some kind of a brownish pink. I think they go together, but the fact that you can see through at the bottom of the sweater, I'm not quite sure I am that happy with it. Anyway, that's the way I'm wearing it today. I'm gonna be leaving soon, I have to go teach. Not sure I'm going to be wearing that outfit uh, to go teaching because it's quite cold right now and we have a cold wave coming up and maybe a storm. So I'm not quite sure I will go with a skirt. I may just wear the same sweater with, with jeans, but that would mean I would have the same thing with the blue of the jeans showing under. So I have to try with other, I have pants, I have clearer pants. So I have to see if, if this will all go together. And so just so that you can see the little back, the buttons and the little keyhole is showing because my t-shirt is up onto my back. So I also need to fix that. So find something that will go with the sweater the way it really is right now. So that means some kind of underwear. I do have some of that. Uh, with just straps and a big v-neck and a big v in the back. More of a tan or skin color and something to wear underneath that I would feel comfortable showing. So I'm wearing my shawl again because I, as, as I said, we are going towards colder weather and today it's not that cold. It's not that warm, not much sun, a bit of light. So I need the comfort of warmer, warmer pieces. Okay, so the non so exciting work in progress for now. This is my Olympe by Camille Quasi de la Haye. She's Camille, Tricot Patou Camille about everywhere. Just to show you, it's long. I'm, it's gonna be a very, very, very long scarf with over a thousand bubbles. I'm, I've crossed the thousand bubble mark now. Just to let you know, I, it's not finished yet, but I'm trying to really, really, really work on it. I've started the decrease. I decided <laughs> it was enough and I've started the decrease to make the pointy end. So there are about 70 something rows to be knitting to for, for the tip of the shawl. And um, after that, it's gonna be done. I'm gonna be weaving my ends. It's not gonna be very difficult because I've been weaving as I go. So I will block or wash the shawl have all the stitches and the yarn gets into their own place and clip, clip my ends and enjoy the river of bubbles. Okay, so what I haven't said is that I'm knitting, knitting this shawl with two strands of cashmere. It's 50% merino, 50% cashmere. So this is what I have left of the 
current two skins that I skinned up from a cone. I bought a one kilogram cone. It's fingering weight. And as I have already said, most I should have stayed with single strand, but now now it's really I I kind of realize that too far down down the road. So I'm just leaving it that way. And after I finish this shawl, I will make a little scarf with the cashmere single stranded to gauge swatch for a future sweater with the cashmere. Yeah. Next, next is going to be a new cast on. As I had already told you, my second son, Theo, asked me to knit one beanie with the same yarn. I knit him a scarf a couple years ago for Christmas. So this was in Fonti Polaire. Fonti Polaire is so from Fonti. This is a mill in, in France and a yarn company. It's 50% alpaca, 50% wool. In this very soft blue color, which is 649. I had one ball left, but I bought three balls to make sure one there would not be any color difference between between the two balls because the ones I had were from two or three years ago. And second, I will I would have enough yarn for the hat. I'm I think I would have had enough with two balls, but I'm just making sure and I will always be able to do something with the leftovers. So we talked about what he wanted and he decided on a pattern from the 52 weeks of accessories, light, straighten up, because it's all reversed when I'm seeing that. Okay, 52 weeks of accessories from Lane, Lane, Lane magazine. And he decided on Sea Breeze. I'm going to place a picture. Sea Breeze has one per repeat. There are three repeats. One big cable, two small cables, and a piece with, let me say that straight. I think it's seed stitch, one by one. And one one segment of seed stitch. And I had offered him to knit several different beanies. He's a very simple person. And I'm kind of surprised he picked this one and he said, well, his scarves has waves that reminds, did me, and I told him it reminded me of the sand once the sea has gone away and the kind of ridges you can see on the sand. And he said, well, the name of the pattern, the fact that his scarf has some kind of cables, he did not say it that way, he said motif. Some kind of cables, he wanted also some kind of motifs on the hat, and he liked this one. Perfect. So I casted it on, and I'm almost done with the first ball, so I will, I will need, at, I think I will need two balls, no more than two balls. So you start with one by one ribs, and then you need the motif. So you see the big, the big cable here, two little cables on either side, and seat stitch, seat stitch on, on, on the one repeat. So I'm knitting with DPNs. Why am I knitting with DPNs? I tried, so, does this happen to you? You start knitting on a project, then you get acquainted with the pattern and you realize some things are not correct and you start over. I did start over after I had already knit two repeats. And I do that very often. And I think it's me getting acquainted with the pattern. I think it's that. But anyway, where is that needle? Which one is that needle? What I did, I was doing magic loop and 
on small circumferences, I guess I'm not a magic loop person, not at all. So I defaulted to DPNs. So I need to gain the ribbing. He, I have his measurements. The pattern asks for a hat that is sitting a little bit high on, on the head. He doesn't want that. So I'm going to be knitting the hat to fit just, just his head. Maybe if I hold it that way, it's going to be better. And so with the folded brim, and I think I made it just the length that he, he asked me for the brim. I, I think it's quite close to what the pattern was already asking for. And here, is, here, is the, here are the braids and the cables. I like them a lot. I like knitting with that yarn a lot. I do recommend this yarn very much if you're in Europe and you can get, or somewhere you can get Fonti yarn. Polaire is a very soft, very soft yarn and uh, very beautiful stitch definition. And I like it a lot. So if I stretch it out a bit so that you can see maybe when it's on someone's head, if you forget the needles, this is gonna be the way it is on his head. And I think he's gonna be he's gonna be liking it a lot. I haven't sent picture. I haven't taken pictures yet of of the hat. I just took pictures before I put my sweater on of the dusking. So I need to take pictures of of this little seabreeze hat. I if you do have the fifty two weeks of accessories, or if if you're watching this from the future and the pattern is available as a single pattern on Ravelry or somewhere else, please consider it because it's a really easy, it's easy pattern, easy to memorize. I have stitch markers on either side of each repeat. There are three motifs per round. And the way there are several sizes. Yes, I did not say I'm knitting the small size because my yarn is a bit bigger and than what the pattern calls for, and I'm also using a bit bigger needle. So I think according to my measurements and according to the swatches I've already made, I think he needs, I need it to need the smallest size. And the way the pattern is written to adjust for several sizes, it's between each motif, you have reverse stockinette stitches and the pattern is adjusted for different sizes with adjusting the number of reverse stockinette stitches in between the motifs. I think it's quite nice because that means for every size, the motif is going to be, are going to be the same. Just the width, separating each of the three motifs per round is going to be different. It's a, it's a nice way to grade patterns and hat patterns for that. As I've already said, I do love, I love seed stitch. It's not most stitch, it's seed stitches, seed stitch one by one. I never recall. <laughs> and uh, I love the way it looks, the weaving kind of structure it gives to a piece. And this way, this one is also going to be very, very nice also due to the, to the, must, to the seed stitch, sorry, I will never learn. I will never learn. Okay, now, the one thing that has been in my head for quite some time. I have two sweaters that I love, the Lorenzon sweaters. The first one I need in 2020, at the end of 2020, the second one, so that's the first, the blue one, I'm going to be showing them to you. The second one I need in, at the end of 2021. And as I've already said, I do not usually need the same pattern twice, <laughs> although I've been doing it. And this shows you how much I liked this pattern very much. Okay, take two, because one of my DPNs, my metal DPNs was on my knees. I had not seen it. And when I was showing the sweater, it dropped and there was a big sound. So the first 
of my Lawrenson sweaters, the first one I knit. I knit with cocon, cocon yarn. I, do, I, I think this yarn still exists. It was the iron weight cocon bleu yarn that I bought from a store in the Netherlands and unfortunately the store, the lady, it went out, it did not resist the pandemic. And the Lorenzon sweater, I, lo I love it, I love it. There is, so I, I think I need it a bit longer. There is a little motif on the side. You may see it here. It's not really obvious where, yeah, maybe that way, where the ribbing part goes up on the side. I'm sorry, with all the blue, my camera is a bit confused. And with balloon sleeves that are a bit short. It's elbow length, about just an elbow length. So this one is pulling, has been pulling. I, I did not know about helical knitting at the time. And the second sleeve has also some kind of pulling that is a bit more random. So it doesn't, it did not really bother me. So here is the sweater. Oh, I'm all yellow. I'm not sure you're gonna be seeing that. So here is the sweater. And if I do it that way, maybe, maybe if I do it that way, I'll still be white. Okay. So the sweater here, I love it. I'm not wearing it. Why do I not wear it? Because of the sleeves. The sleeves are too puffy. So this is an Aaron Wade sweater. So it's a wintertime sweater. I can't wear it. And the very few times I've been wearing it was where during the springtime where I could have shorter sleeves with a bigger gauge sweater in iron weight and, and that's all. So I don't wear it because of the sleeves. There is no way that kind of sleeve fits under my coat. I have a cape. I have a cape. And that's the only way I can wear this sweater with a cape. But it's not very practical because my choice, I use public transportation. So I have a backpack with my computer and all my stuff inside when I go work. A cape is not practical. You can use the backpack and the backpack doesn't fit under the cape. It's not made for that. It's a dark blue cape in, in wool in fabric, fabric wool. And I love it, I love it, but it's not practical to go working with a cape. So I don't wear the Lawrenson sweater. It's quite unfortunate. It's my second sweater, because I love the fit, I love the way it looks, I love the three quarter or elbow length sleeves. I made another one. So this one was in this very yellow, that I think do not fit me at all, but I can wear it with a scarf between the yellow and, and my skin so that I do not look too, too, too sick. And this one is in the finest mohair from the Pyrenees. And it, but it's not very, it's, it's, it's a finer mohair, but it's not, it's not see-through. It's not at all like silk mohair, not at all. It's a smaller gauge mohair in this very, very, very beautiful color, yellow color that I love. I love it, but it doesn't fit me. But it's not the reason why I'm not wearing it because I have no problem wearing things I like, even when I think they do not fit me. Maybe you're going to be able to see the side details here on this one. So it's, you know, I, I knit it the same way, even maybe even bigger, bigger sleeves. Same thing. Um, warmer sweater with elbow length sleeves, big puffy sleeves, sorry, big puffy sleeves. I don't wear it. I, I wear it. The only time I've been wearing that sweater is for filming on camera and I would wear something else to go work. And same issue as the other one. And 
This has been in my head and bugging me for a very long time because I have these two beautiful sweaters that I love, in yarn that I love, that I like wearing, that I do not wear. So what am I going to be doing with both of them? I'm going to be removing the sleeves and turning them, if I can, into sleepovers. So it's setting sleeves and the sleeves, I, I hope I'm not giving away anything and I think you will see it better here. I will have to see if I can tell you that from the pattern description. So it's set in sleeve and then you do short rows to shape the sleeves. So here the seam is quite, quite what it could be, quite what it could be for a vest or a sleepover. And once I've removed the sleeves or just before I can go after the short rows, removing the short rows, if I still have the, the stitches, I can retrieve the stitches, I will make a little border the same way that the color is. So here for this one and for the cocon bleu sleeve, which the sleeves are a little bit smaller. So you can see there are certain sleeves and I will do the same. Unravel the sleeves, either keep, keep the stitches if I can, keep the stitches that I had picked up around the armholes or not and knit another border and it's the same the same little border one by one twisted ribs i'm not sure the pattern calls for twisted ribs i think i think it calls for but i usually do twisted ribs because i like the way the ribs sit a bit better around the collar on the arm the cuffs and stuff like that so this one is also going to become, <laughs> I'm all yellow. This one is also going to become a vest and I'm sure I will wear it as a vest because I do wear my Emsworth vest and the Hoodra vest a lot and I have to refrain myself from only wearing these two ones. So, two ones. So, I will wear, I'm sure, vests or sleepovers if I remove the sleeves and I keep the body and arrange something for the armhole. So please tell me, do you do that? Are there pieces in your knitting world, in your wardrobe, that you do not wear because either they don't fit you or not fitting you, but they do not fit me, they fit me size-wise but they do not fit my lifestyle or these big puffy sleeves do not fit with the weight of the sweater and the fact that I am wearing that during the winter time and the, the sleeves do not fit under my coat. What do you do when this happens? So I'm gonna be trying to reclaim, so it's not really reclaim, but repurpose the two sweaters as vests Reclaim the yarn, yes, and maybe have that into my stash to do some other things. How do you, do you have pieces like that that you don't wear because this or that reason? If it's the wrong color, <laughs> well, you can change it. So, but, but, but do you do that? Do you try to reclaim and wear pieces that you've knit, that you love, but you don't wear? Okay, next one, I'm, I, I want to reclaim yarn from a shawl, a beautiful shawl, you're gonna tell me, why do you do that? A beautiful shawl that I do not wear. It's my second half and half that I knit at the beginning of 2022. So I have had plenty of time, it's two years, plenty of time to know that this shawl is in my shelves and I don't wear it. So this shawl I knit with Dererum Natura, Ulysse yarn, beautiful yarn, perfect yarn, in the Ciel colorway and Iroise, in that jewel tone, and I name it from USA and back because if I go to the tippity tip of Brittany in France, 
And I look towards the United States, where a lot of my friends are. I will see the blue of the sky and the green of the, of the sea. The Iroise Sea, that's the name of the sea there, is really bluish green. That way, it's ex this exact same color. The half and half is a humongous shoal. And it's weights, it weights a lot. Let me see how many skeins I have in that shoal. Okay, yes, so there are eight skeins of Ulysse from Dererum Natura from each color. So that's 16 total and that's 800 grams. The shoal is big. It's stiff. It's heavy. I don't wear it because it's more like a blanket than a real shawl. It's not practical. It's very heavy. I can't fold it the way I like. And wearing Dererum Natura Ulysian as a blanket, I, I, I can't do that. So I have the first one I need is from a commercial yarn I had, I had bought for the, for the, for the shawl itself when I first saw the pattern and it's commercial yarn from Berger de France I think I ordered it online online it's not a good quality yarn it's merino but not a good merino and wearing it during the winter time as a as a blanket on my bed or in my bed or on me like that yes what I wanted is a shawl I can wear to work Am I able to go to work with that, with my backpack, as I just said? No, so I don't. Do I wear it at home? Sometimes, but not very often. Not often enough to justify having such beautiful yarn sitting on my shelves and not having my attention because it's not practical. It's too heavy. So. Would I need another half and half at some point? Most probably, yes. But with a very a lighter yarn, something that would be more, air, more airy and flowy. It's not, it was not designed for this yarn. This was my choice. Good. But I don't wear it. I love the colors. I love both of the colors. I love the green one. And I love the blue one. So... My intention is to unravel everything, reclaim the yarn, and I will see what I have. I have a few, I, I think I had bought 10 balls of each color, so I have leftovers, so maybe I can knit a sweater or a vest, another vest, or something else with that very, 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 very beautiful yarn, because I think it's kind of a crime to having that sitting on my shelves and me looking at it and not wearing it. What do you think? What would you do? I'm almost 100% decided. Ulysse is a very, very nice yarn, yarn. I think I won't have much trouble reclaiming it. Maybe I will need to wash it to unwrinkle it. Maybe not. So, yes, my next, next, now that my two big, bigger sweater projects are finished, I'm knitting on my son's beanie. I'm going to finish the 1000 bubble scarf. And I am going to modify my two sweaters and reclaim this beautiful yarn from my half and half. And as I was saying my half and half, I think I forgot to say it's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. People have knit gazillions of them in linen quill. This is the yarn that Pearl Soho calls for. And I, it, I have no easy access to linen quill. There is no way I'm gonna order that type of yarn. From the United States, I can justify the <laughs> carbon carbon price and not even the shipping price, the carbon price and the carbon foot, footprint that I would leave ordering lin, linen quill. 
from the United States. Maybe I can find it in France. Maybe. I will be able to find similar yarn with linen and, and wool. I'm sure in France if I want to. So, but for now, and maybe I can even find some lighter weight yarn in my stash. I'm sure I can. I know I can to make another half and half. But for now, this one is going to go back into skins and I'm going to need either sweaters or vests or something like, or, or maybe a jacket. I have several patterns by Intermstein that I think would be perfect in Ulysse. So maybe a jacket. It's OK. That's it for today. A shorter episode and I hope I will have enough time to edit and everything before this Friday. We are on a Tuesday. So the sun has come out a bit more light and I'm going to be happy to be going working in a bit of a sun. So if you're not interested into the very little life updates, because I gave a bigger one last week that I'm going to be talking about just next. I thank you very, very much to be watching my videos and being here with me. And I do hope I will see you next time. Okay, so a bit of a life update. There are two main. My lips, statu quo. The treatment that the, my medical doctor gave me, and it's going to be finished at the end of this week, the delay, the two weeks, it's not doing much. One of you suggested that maybe it's an allergy. I had that in the back of my mind for quite some time. So what I'm doing is I'm not using my toothpaste any longer. You need to brush your teeth, but you don't need any toothpaste. Of course, it gives you better taste in the mouth and a better breath, maybe. But toothpaste is not a requirement. You can brush your teeth without toothpaste. Has it changed anything? Maybe. I need to see. It's been a few days since I've omitting the toothpaste and maybe I will go back to see my medical doctor at the end of this week so that we can talk about it. So not worse, not better. My hip, I thank you very, very much for all your kind words and I thank Caroline with exchange mails and, and conversations about that. I am on the journey. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to be making another appointment with the surgeon and say, OK, this is enough. This is enough. I'm not going to be going into physical therapy twice a week for years and years and years. It's enough. We have to do something. Because when I have physical therapy, it lasts for a day, 48 hours maybe, and then the pain comes back. So enough is enough. But first, so I have a blood work done. It's, it's underway. I haven't had any blood work done, serious blood work done in five years. I need to go do a mammography. And I had the procedure done, it's something you do at home for intestine and colon cancer. So this is, I'm waiting for the results. And once this is done, I will call back the lady or maybe before that, I will call back the lady, the secretary at the surgeon's office and I will arrange with her an appointment not not two months from now. She said I could do that. I'm all I'm decided in my head. I'm decided. The thing that I have to do is do it. Make the call, go to see him and say, okay, I'm done. We need. We need. I need to gather my thoughts and organize and and do it. It's a very difficult choice because for now my life is not in danger. If my life was in danger, I would not, it would be no question. But my life is not in danger. My 
quality of life is. This is what I have to think about, my quality of life, the way I can walk, the way I can do my yoga that I could not, cannot tell you. I can, I do yoga two or three times a week. But there are some postures and some movements I can't do, and it's every time it's a failure. I can't do that. I can't do that. So maybe I need to adjust my own reasoning behind that and say, okay, that's life. But, but the pain is quite of a burden. And a couple of you have mentioned that. It's a, it's a heavy everyday burden. And there are treatments now and the surgery, the surgeon, he's, that's his job. His job is arthritis of the lower body. That's his job. So he knows his business. And I'm, I have faith in him and I do trust what he's saying. But I need to go back to tell him that time out for me and maybe we need to consider other things. In the meantime, in the meantime, I am trying to do what I tell you to do every week that is placing hope and happiness into my own little stitches. For, so for one project, it's easy because it's for my son. So when I need, I think of him and it makes me happy. Please, please try to place joy and happiness into your knitting, into your little stitches, so that you can build joy and happiness into your day, because it's not going to come all by itself, and into your life, because it's not coming all by itself. And in particular, in these very, very dark and times we are living in with lots of issues, lots of war, lots of suffering. And if that gets onto you, I'm not saying to block out everything. We live in a world that that's the way it is, but we need to try to build up joy and happiness into our own life on a daily basis. It's not, I'm gonna be thinking that about that next month. The way I say about the surgeon appointment, you can procrastinate about placing some joy and happiness into your life. So, yeah, I thank you a lot for being here with me. I thank you a lot for watching my videos and liking and subscribing and doing all the YouTube goodness. I will be sending, sending you merry little stitches as I'm working on my son's beanie because I'm thinking of him and I'm infusing this hat with love mother's love and I will be sending it out to you and please take care of yourself and I will see you next time.